Thank you for coming by for my daily devotions on uh, November 27th, 2023. We're going to look at uh, Romans 13, Mark 14, Psalm 146, and Leviticus chapter 24. Uh, we read the 12th chapter of Romans yesterday, great, great chapter. And uh, the, verse, the first wor verse defines worship. This is where worship begins. Without this, worship doesn't happen, okay? Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. I'll tell you where worship starts. It starts by us offering our bodies to the Lord in service. That's where it starts. And everything about worship flows from that position. That is our spiritual act of worship. That's where worship begins, by us giving us back to the Lord to serve him. That's where worship starts. There's a lot of confusion about worship. We think it's just getting together in a worship service, raising our hands and singing. That's part of it, but it starts by surrendering your life to the Lord to serve him. Well, let's take a minute and pray. Father, speak to us today. Change our lives by what we hear. Make us fresh and new by the word we hear from you. For we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter 13. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and, you will, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only, uh, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants to give you their full time to give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law, the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other command there might be are summed up in one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And then Mark chapter 14. This is a very important chapter. Mark 14, and it's a long chapter. 72 verses, I think it is. But it establishes a whole lot of important stuff. So we're going to chop through it, okay? Now, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only, a, only two days away. And the chief priests and teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, uh, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, but you can, and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare me to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. 
Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Go we'll take a drink of coffee. Hope you're enjoying your morning. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, to his disciples, saying, Take, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. That's Zechariah 13, 7. After, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, today, tonight, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into the temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting enough? The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here come my betrayers. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. He fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They figured that was Mark, okay? That the scholars figured that was Mark, who's writing this book. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements 
did not agree. S uh, then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days will build another not made by man. Yet even their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up among them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? I am, Jesus said, said Jesus. And you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. She, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus, they said, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow's one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you're one of them. You are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself. He swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. And Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him before the rooster crows twice. You will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord with all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. At that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. And then Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light so that the lamps may be kept burning continually. Outside of the curtain of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps before the Lord from evening till morning continually. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. The lamps on the pure gold lampstands before the Lord must be tended continually. Take fine flour and bake 12 loaves of bread using two tenths of an ephah for each loaf. Set them in, in two rows, six in each row on the table of pure gold before the Lord. Along each row, put some pure incense as a memorial portion to present the bread to be an offering made to the Lord by fire. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in a holy place because it is a holy part of the regular share of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. Uh, now the son of an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father went out among the Israelites and a fight broke out in the camp between him and an Israelite. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name with a curse, so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Sh uh, Shalometh, the daughter of Debri, the Danite. They put him in custody until the will of the Lord should be made clear. Then the Lord said to Moses, take the blasphemer outside, outside the camp. All those who heard him 
are to lay their hands on his head, and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, if anyone curses his God, he will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. It must be put to death. The entire assembly must stone him, whether an alien or native born. When he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he must be put to death. If anyone takes the life of a human being, he must be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor, whatever he has done must be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has injured the other, so he must be injured. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a man must be put to death. You are to have the same law for the alien and the native born. I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites, and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded Moses. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us, Father. Change our lives by the truth we hear from your word. Make us different because we heard from you uh, with a new law on our hearts. Change us from the inside out, Father, and make us new on your terms. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.